Hi, have you ever had a hard drive go bad that really had some important data on there? Perhaps your homework folder that you just don't have any copies of for obvious reasons. Well, today we're going to try and rescue this hard drive, which belongs to my grandfather. I don't think he's after his homework folder, though. Probably more business stuff. So, if you'd like to learn some of the best ways to rescue data non-destructively, stick around. What we have here is a 2 terabyte Seagate Barracuda. Luckily, this is a pretty common drive and fairly reliable. As long as it is still somewhat alive, we should be able to save most, if not all, of the data on this drive. First, we're going to need some donor drives. Each of these have their own unique uses for this particular method of trying to save the data. First, I have a 3 terabyte Seagate Barracuda. Now the reason we're going with 3 terabytes is sometimes drives do not like to clone to the same size drive. I can't quite explain why, but that is something I have run into, and we will be cloning, well, attempting to clone that dead hard drive. Now this is an identical drive. If I can save his data, this, this is the one that we will send back to him. Additionally, I have two other 2 terabyte drives. Why? Because I don't know if any of these work. These ones technically work, but I have had some issues with the company that sold me them. And one of these two, I don't remember which one, has a serial number that's all zeros. So although these two do technically work, I don't trust either of them. So. How are we going to do this clone? Well, there's a couple of different methods. We're going to go through them from easiest to most difficult. From something everybody can do to something that's a little less common and a little less easy to do for the average person. Hopefully we don't have to go that far. First, we need a system. The system we are using today is an HP 8200 Small Form Factor Elite. These are fairly widely available. I actually got this one out of the trash, but it does work. And they support a fairly wide variety of SATA hard drives, including large capacity ones. We won't need that functionality, but I like these systems. They're pretty robust and reliable. Now the first thing that we need to do is test all of the potential donor drives to make sure that they are in fully functional order. My preferred method of doing this, quick and dirty, is to just grab the Ultimate Boot CD, which is free and open source online. It contains a number of different functionalities that are quite useful. In our case, we're going under Hard Drive. We're actually going under Cloning first, and then we're gonna click on Clonezilla. Now, we're not using this right away, we simply want it to open up the parted magic operating environment so we can view the smart data of the hard drives. Unfortunately, it appears that our 3 terabyte drive is in fact not good. It's not super horrible, it only has a few bad sectors, but that is enough for it to not work for our uses. Next, we put in our dead hard drive. At this point, we boot into Clonezilla. I should also mention Ventoy is quite a nice program that lets you boot from a whole host of different ISO files. That's what we're using for our boot environment. But now that we're booting into Clonezilla, we see the first hint of problems. I've sped up this footage, but Clonezilla? took almost 15 minutes to boot when it usually takes less than 30 seconds. On top of that, as we can see here, it doesn't see the dead hard drive. Not even as an option. That's not good. I tried this multiple times and it looks like this just isn't going to work for us. 
there is one thing we can try non-destructively to try and rescue this hard drive before we go any further and that is to simply take off the controller board and clean all the different contacts. My preferred method for this is a simple pencil eraser. Now that that's done, we install the hard drive again and no different. Well, since this is supposed to be the easy method, I'm going to go ahead and just take the other two hard drives and demonstrate what a proper clone should look like. After you start Clonezilla, we want device to device. That'll work directly from drive to drive. We do not want device to image. Once cloned, as long as it is successful, we can take that new drive plug it in where the old drive was and it will work as if it were the old drive. We want disk to local disk as the method. Then we simply choose which drive is the source drive. Now this is the one you will be cloning from and then you choose the target drive. This is the one you want to clone to. Do not mix these up. Do not you will destroy all the data on the old drive if you do so. When I'm dealing with drives of unknown condition I usually skip fixing the old file system it's just a safer method and I always want to use the partition table from the old drive and finally it's asking us what it should do when it's done I usually tell it to just give me the option to restart or reboot or shut down at this point it's mostly just pressing enter. The first one just says we're ready. The second one is a warning that it will overwrite all the data on the target drive. The second time it'll ask you, it's just to make sure you really want to overwrite any data on the target drive. And then we begin. At this point the cloning process will begin and it takes quite a long time if you're doing it from a hard drive to a hard drive. The larger the drive, the longer it takes. If we were to go through this entire process, it could take upwards of six to eight hours for a two terabyte drive, depending on the performance characteristics of the specific drives. If you're going from a hard drive to an SSD, you cut that time down drastically, and from an SSD to an SSD, it's cut down even further. Let's move on to once again trying to rescue this hard drive. Now I do want to briefly touch on the fact that if we had a completely identical drive we could potentially swap the boards on the back, the controller board, but unfortunately even though my identical drive is the same model it must be a newer or older revision because the controller board is slightly different and will not work as a replacement. Now this next method actually uses a server. We're going to go ahead and install the drives and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the RAID controller of the server. This is why this is slightly less available to most people. But we're going to go into the RAID card we're going to create a RAID 1, which is effectively mirrored disks. The reason we want to do this is once we create that RAID 1, that second drive will have all the data of the first drive. Now, unfortunately, as I'm about to learn, the hard drive is still not detected. That means that this hard drive is well and truly dead. I with my capabilities, cannot rescue this hard drive. I tried this multiple times and in different slots as well. Just can't do it. Grandpa, I tried my best. At this point, if he wants to rescue the data off of this hard drive, he will have to probably go with one of those services. Again, if I had a identical hard drive as a donor with an identical backboard, maybe, but even then, that's a long shot. But at the very least, I can show you what this should look like 
if we were going to do with this method and if it were successful. Now I've had to do this method a lot because Clonezilla often does not like hard drives that have bad sectors on them. Occasionally you can squeak past those errors but more often than not Clonezilla will simply refuse to clone drives that have bad sectors. Once it runs into them it stops the transfer. So the way this works is you choose one drive to begin the RAID 1 and it should ask you to migrate the existing data. Turns out I've got the wrong RAID card. So let's try this again using a server with the correct RAID card. It's my understanding that you want something with an LSI SAS card instead of this 3-ware card or 3-com whichever one this is. And here we have the correct kind of RAID card. Now initially it appears I actually forgot to install hard drives in this machine so while I was recording I quickly ran off to put a couple of drives in just again to show what it should look like. Now I've told the machine to rescan and here we go two hard drives detected. Now in this case what we want to do is we want to go into RAID properties create IM volume and this is where we can select one disk as the source disk see here it's asking about the data we're gonna go ahead and keep existing data then we select the other one as the mirror you can see it says secondary there save changes and this can take a little bit of time depending on the size of the disks but we're actually gonna go back into RAID properties here to show what I want to see and that is the status. Currently it says 0% synced, but that means it is actively syncing. And once it's done, we will have two identical drives. Unfortunately, it seems we are not able to rescue this hard drive. But we gave it our best shot, and hopefully some of you learned something with this video. Everything that I used is free to download on the internet. Most of it's open source. Of course, with the exception of the RAID cards in the servers, but you do what you can. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video at least taught a few people a few things, and I suppose I need to get this sent back off to my grandfather. There are still a few options for rescuing the data off of this. There are services that specialize in this kind of thing. They're a little pricey, but if this data is important enough, it may be worth the cost. In the meantime, thank you for watching.